this is the story of Monsters, Inc. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it's time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Well, let's begin now. It was a sunny morning in Monstropolis as two monsters arrived at work. One was a huge blue spotted monster named James P. Sullivan, or Sully for short. He was with his best friend, Mike Wazowski. Mike was small and green and had one enormous eye. The two of them worked at Monsters, Inc. It was their job to capture the screams of children and use them as energy to power the city. They entered the human world through doors kept at the factory. While Sully and Mike stopped in the locker room, a group of monsters was getting a lesson on how to scare. Mr. Waternoose, the five-eyed president of Monsters, Inc., reminded them of the most important rule. There's nothing more toxic or deadly than a human child. A single touch could kill you. Just as Sully and Mike were about to head to the scare floor, a chameleon-like monster named Randall appeared from out of nowhere. Mike screamed and fell backward. Ah! Randall snickered. <laughs> what do you know? It scares little kids and little monsters. Randall was Sully's only competition for top scarer at Monsters, Inc. And Randall was determined to take the lead. As he slithered away, Sully and Mike went to their work area. Each monster had a station on the scare floor. There, a door would drop down from a huge vault in the ceiling so that the monster could enter a child's bedroom. Red lights lit up above the doors to show they were active. Mike cheered on Sully as the big monster opened the door and crossed into a child's room. Suddenly, an alarm sounded. Another monster had come back with a human sock stuck to him. Get it off! Get it off! Agents from the Child Detection Agency, or CDA, swarmed the scare floor to get rid of the dangerous sock. Despite the setback, Sully had been successful. Another day like this and that scare record's in the bag. When Sully started to leave, he discovered a door that hadn't been returned to the vault. Sully slowly opened the door and stepped into a child's bedroom. Oh, no monsters there. But when he returned to the scare floor, a little girl was clinging to his tail. <laughs> Sully was terrified. He tried to put her back, but someone was coming. He couldn't let them see that he had been in contact with a child. He quickly scooped up the girl. Then he rushed home, grabbing Mike on the way. The monsters brought the girl back to their apartment while they tried to come up with a plan. The girl ran around happily, but then she grabbed a one-eyed teddy bear. That's it. No one touches little Mikey. As Mike grabbed the bear back, the girl screamed loudly. The energy from the screen made the lights in the apartment surge brightly. Mike tried to give the bear back to her, but he slipped, flew through the air, and landed upside down. The girl began to laugh. That caused all the lights in the whole building to come on, and then blow out. Sully looked around amazed. What was that? It seemed that the girl's laughter was even more powerful than her screaming. Hey, Mike, this might sound crazy, but I don't think that kid's dangerous. But the monsters still had to get the girl back to the human world. The next day, Sully disguised her in a little monster costume and brought her to the factory. When Mike and Sully saw Mr. Waternoose, they ducked into a restroom with the girl. The three hid in a stall. They heard the voice of a monster named Fungus. Randall, what are we going to do about the child? You just get the machine up and running. I'll take care of the kid. And I find how they let it out. They're dead. Mike and Sully hurried to the scare floor. A door was waiting. Sully shook his head. This isn't Boo's door. Boo? What's Boo? Sully, you're not supposed to name it. Once you name it, you start getting attached to it. Now say goodbye to it. Way to go. What'd you do it? The girl was no longer there. Sully took off. 
Mike tried to follow behind, but Randall cornered him. Where's the kid? Mike crossed his arms. You're not pinning this on me. Randall told Mike that the scare floor was about to empty out for lunch. The girl's door would be there. You have until then to put the kid back. Sully had found Boo by the time Mike finally reached him. They returned to the scare floor where they spotted Boo's door. There it is, just like Randall said. Mike marched into Boo's room. Suddenly, a large box trapped him. <laughs> Randall popped out of a hiding spot and carried away the box containing Mike. <gasps> Sully gasped. The trap had been meant for Boo. <laughs> Sully and Boo caught up with Randall just as he was strapping Mike into a giant machine in a secret lab. I am about to revolutionize the scaring industry. First, I need to know where the kid is, and you're going to tell me. Say hello to the scream extractor. But when Randall wasn't looking, Sully freed Mike. Sully and Mike went to find Mr. Waternoose. He was in a training room with a class. James! Perfect timing. Before Sully could protest, Mr. Waternoose made him enter a fake bedroom and show the students how a real roar sounded. Boo began to cry. Sully hadn't meant to scare her. Just then, the hood of Boo's costume slipped off her head. Mr. Waternoose gasped. <gasps> the child! Still scared, Boo ran from Sully right into Mr. Waternoose's arms. I'm sorry you boys got mixed up in this, but... Now we can set everything straight again, for the good of the company. Mr. Waternoose brought Mike and Sully to a strange-looking door. Mike frowned. Uh, sir, that's not her door. I know, I know, it's yours. <laughs> he shoved Mike and Sully through the door and slammed it shut behind them. The two friends landed on a snowy mountain. Mike looked at Sully angrily. Ever since that kid came in, you've ignored everything I've said. And now look where we are. Oh, we were about to break the record, Sully. None of that matters now. Boo's in trouble. Luckily, Sully found an active closet door in a nearby village. He crossed back into Monsters, Inc. And he raced to Randall's secret lab. Boo! Boo was strapped in a chair. The screen extractor inches from her face. Mr. Waternoose, Randall, and Fungus looked on. Sully smashed the machine, ah! grabbed Boo, and took off. Stop it! Don't let him get away! Just in time, Mike appeared. He ran with Sully and Boo to the scare floor. They grabbed onto a door that was on its way back to the vault. They had to get to Boo's door. So he knew what to do. Make her laugh! Mike looked at Boo. Then he socked himself in the head. Boo started giggling, and the energy created by her laughter caused the red lights above all the doors in the vault to light up. At that moment, Sully recognized Boo's closet door flying by. Holding Boo, he and Mike jumped onto it. But before they could get it open, it started to drop. Mike screamed. What's happening? The door sailed down toward the scare floor, where Mr. Waternoose was waiting. He grinned evilly. On the ground, Sully grabbed Boo's door, and he and the girl took off. Mr. Waternoose chased them. They ran to the training room. Sully put Boo's door in the fake bedroom and hid Boo in the bed. He needed to make it look like it was her real room so Mr. Waternoose would believe it. She's home now. Just leave her alone. I can't do that. She's seen too much. I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die. Suddenly, the lights came on. Mike was manning the controls. Mr. Waternoose had been caught on tape. As Mike and Sully watched... CDA agents entered the room. They arrested Mr. Waternoose and led him away. Moments later, Sully opened Boo's real door. She was delighted to see her room again. Sully tucked Boo into bed and patted her on the head. Nothing's coming out of your closet to scare you anymore, right?
Goodbye, Boo. Teddy. Boo looked at him sadly and waved goodbye. Sally quietly stepped into her closet and closed the door behind him. When he was on the other side, the CVA shredded Boo's door to prevent future monsters from getting into her room. Thanks to Sully and Mike's discovery of the power of children's laughter, Monsters, Inc. soon switched their energy source from screams to giggles. Sully took over as president, and Mike was their top laugh collector. One day, Mike presented Sully with Boo's door, all taped up. He had saved the pieces. From then on, Sully was able to check on Boo and make sure she was laughing, too. 